And we're in jeopardy of losing our jobs at the end of December. Being a Native American, we've been handed pieces of paper before with signatures saying this is what we're going to do and that's what they're going to do. And, blah, blah, blah. and 360 of them have been broken. So this is not unique. Boston Monitors are right here, but her side is over here on the left. New York Monitors are here also. Parents and students are in the house also here in solidarity. Look at the face, look at the color, look at the language, look at the culture. These are men and women who care for our children. This is war, this is a crime. It's an international struggle. Yes. That's why workers are here from California to New York, because they know that what we do in this city is as important to them as what they do in their cities is important to us. There are workers across this world outside of the United States who are listening, who are looking, because they understand that the only way that the human beings of this earth that the workers of this earth are going to be able to be treated with respect and dignity is if we stick together. The corporations, the corporations like the Olia, the, the Olias, <laughs> these multinational corporations are trying to make slaves of us all. The Olia, set up this situation October 8th. They signed an agreement on June 18th saying that they would respect the terms of the contract and then they consciously disrespected it from the first day. All the workers asked for on October 8th was a meeting. All they asked for was a meeting, an agreement to a meeting before they stepped on the bus. They locked the gates. And once they locked the gates, what did they say? They said the workers on strike. The federal judge that they went to that afternoon to get an injunction saw through their hypocrisy and said, I can't give you an injunction because there is no strike. Union! Union! They say Boston strong. New York strong, yeah. California strong, yeah. all the coast is strong. Yeah. We're gonna stand strong up against this devil. You love our children. Yeah. You demonstrate that every day. Amen. So how can we allow 
our work is to transport our most valued resource to go without our support and our love. Veolia must know that the people of Boston support our workers. Right. On October 8th, I made a phone call to our interim superintendent, a person I've worked with for the better part of the last 30 years. I said, Mr. McDonough, we have school bus drivers who are willing and able to pick up our children that Tuesday afternoon, not the next Monday morning, but right now. So I had him on the phone. He hesitated. I said, listen, call Viola. Tell Viola to take the chains off of those fences and open up the yards so our bus drivers can pick up our children. So what did the interim superintendent say to your city councilor, your city councilor of 30 years, former president of the Boston City Council, person born and raised right here in the city of Boston, who sent all four children to the Boston Public Schools transported by our school bus drivers, including including transported by somebody by the name of Steve. He transported my daughter to the Matterhunt School. Each and every one of you transport the children of other parents. We trust you, but now we must support you in your struggle for dignity and respect. You tell Veolia that if you can't live up to the contract, then you have to go. Thank you. Everyone know that we're standing here shoulder to shoulder in your fight. You guys have been with us, been with us through all our battles with Verizon uh, when we were out two years ago, almost two years ago now. And, you know, you've been great. So we're here to let you know that we're here with you. Thank you. We are proud that a whole busload of us woke up at 3.30 in the morning, so don't you all complain about 7. 3.30 in the morning to go down to New York City and to raise some good union hell down in New York City. They showed a speech that we gave at the Zoriga Ave Terminal, and this nasty corporation thinks they own us. Tell us we can't do solidarity. We're not going to allow them to criminalize solidarity. And when ATU and their president, Michael Cordiello, found out about this, they wrote us the most beautiful solidarity letter. They were proud of what we did. And they stand with us. But they didn't just write a letter. So this morning, when some of you all were sleeping, they got up in New York City. <laughs> Maria Gentili one of the strike leaders down there, and a wonderful organizer that made this happen, an executive board member delegate, my good buddy, Vinny Butoh. Let's give it up for 1181! As you know, we have our own battle in New York. We're all in this fight together. It's throughout the whole country. We have to stick together. We will defeat them. Let me um, say that this would not be possible without Robin. Let's give a, a, a round of applause for Robin. On behalf of Michael Cordiello, our union president, the entire union, thank you again for all your solidarity last year. Thank you very much, everybody. To update, our, to update you all on what's happening, just let me say that we are in a bit of struggle with our own city right now, not only with the contractors, but with the city as well. But it's in solidarity that we all prevail, not only local 1181, but Boston as, Boston's union as well. Yes. Sometimes out of adversity comes good things. And that was meeting Stephen Kirschbaum. <laughs> solidarity forever. Union power. Yes. We have filed 100 grievances since these turkeys came in here, 57 of them by my brother Andre Francois. He's the chairman of the Civil Rights Committee. He's the toughest man in union. Give it up for Andre Francois! Thank you, Steve, thank you. You all are looking good out here. Thank you for being here for us. Look at
petite chose. Là, oui, on m'a fait. Quand je suis venu ici, I love you all. Thank you. Um, I got the honor today. Oh, God, getting fired, uh, feeling good. Man. Oh. All right. <laughs> I have the honor today to introduce you to you, our brother, Charles Clemens, the only radio station, FM, in the community that will stay here for us and stand around for the community and that will not refuse to give us any, any time, any, any program that we want to get on. And you want to be supportive of uh, our brother, Charles Clemens. Any other media wasn't picking anything up. They were lying. <laughs> Buku lying. They were lying. Thank you. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand here because it's the right thing to do. Right. Unity in the community. Unity in the community. Unity in the community. Unity in the community. Hands off the school bus union five. The coalition is hosting a community meeting so that the bus drivers can get the parents of the Boston public kids out so they can get the truth out to them. We're asking your help to get the word out for families of the children that you drive to come out and hear the truth. Get a 
of nobody being able to mess with you easily. And so maybe, maybe someone wants to make an example and say, see you here, we, we're getting rid of unions, greed and capitalism and wealth and money wins, workers lose, and we're going to make an example out of that 8751 in Boston by trying to cut off their head and then crash them. Knowing this, sisters and brothers, is to know how important your struggle is. And it's why the ATU in New York is here. It's why you got people from Providence. You got people from New York. You got people from Baltimore. You got people from the West Coast. And there's a lot of people who aren't here, but they know about it. And their heart is with you. Union busting is disgusting. The workers are going to win. Take it. You are standing this afternoon because you believe in justice. Yeah. And this is why I'm here with you today. Yeah. Bring your children because you are fighting for them. Yeah. When they're coming in here, bring your brothers and your sisters because you are fighting for them. I'm one of these five. Yeah. There I am right there. I'm with everybody here. There's nothing that I did any different than anybody here. In fact, all of us did the same thing. We were demanding a meeting of VO, but no. Vile liar. And that's exactly who they are. Vile liars. Because an injury to one is an injury to all. And no way are my brothers going to be fired. No way will 800 of us be given written warnings. No way that we are going to stop standing up for our rights. Through Team Solidarity, the organization that we have formed, with a rank and file union they showed us that if you don't have a union fight to get one if you if you have a union fight if you don't have a union fight to get one if you got one fight to make a fight and they definitely showed us how to make teamsters fight for us this is about the resegregation of the boston public schools so this struggle is important for all of us across the country what's taking place in here in boston it's a microcosm of what we have to fight in this country nationally and internationally. And that's about fighting the power of big capital that not, wants to turn the clock back on women, on LGBTQ people, on African American people, on immigrants, on everybody. They want to attack all of us. So it's not just about the school bus drivers. It's about all of us, all of us, the 99% who have to stick together. He's from Local 26, and we'd like to give him a great big hand for still being out here, showing his solidarity and his support. Ed Child. I am a worker. We are workers. There is nothing we can't do. Why? Why? Because we have solidarity. Yeah.